Okay, so here is Sherry again, and we're gonna play this weird horror game. Um, it's a visual novel. So yeah, let's just get in, I guess. The music's kind of loud. What's your name? Okay, let's go with... Okay. Welcome home. This is my boyfriend, Takuya. Uh, we've been together for five years and we couldn't be more in love. Every day when I come home from work, he greets me with a radiant smile and rushes to prepare dinner. Everything about him puts me at ease. His presence, his sweet words, all of it. I couldn't live without him. Good morning, my darling. I see you're wearing the apron I got you. You noticed? Yes, I like it a lot. Good. I lean in close and whisper in his ear. It looks great on you. D don't tease me like that. He is absolutely adorable. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Ah, oh, that, that's breathing. Sorry, I couldn't help it. A anyway, let me take your things. He takes my bag and my jacket. Dinner will be ready soon. So, just put your feet up in the living room for a bit, okay? No, he's a guy. He should, he should have a deeper voice, right? Dinner will be ready soon. So put, put your feet up in the living room for a bit, okay? That sounds wonderful. Just let me grab my phone real quick. I dig through my pockets, but I can't find it. Tokia studies me with a strange expression. I have no idea where I could have left it. Crap, I would have wanted to read the news. Don't worry about it. I actually went out and I bought you today's paper. He pops into the living room and returns with the newspaper in his hand. And here. Wow, thank you. You really think of everything, Takuya. You're welcome. I've noticed that you've started reading the news whenever you get home these days. I try to pay attention to that stuff. So from now on, every day, I will make sure to get you the newest issue. All these screens today, they are poison to human relationships. The stress, the addiction, the isolation, those things can ruin a couple, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know, you told me a thousand of times, love. It's why you got rid of the TV and our computers too. Huh? I'm not trying to nag you. It just seems like you would maybe forgotten. We don't need those gadgets in our lives. Besides, the only person I really care about is you, Sherry. Maybe I shouldn't put my name. You always butter me up when you are trying to change the subject. Mm. You're lucky that you are so charming, Taku. I said, don't tease me. He pouts and that cute, boyish expression completely melts my heart. Fine, I'll behave. I'll go wait for you in the living room, okay? Do you need anything to drink? Uh, a lemonade would be lovely. Thanks. I sit on the chair and start reading the newspaper. Cutting down on tech had been Takuya's idea. And while it had been hard at first, I've grown used to it. I can't even remember the last time I used a computer. I just got so used to not having one around that I don't even miss it anymore. Then again, I forgot a lot of things. It's probably because of my amnesia. When Takuya first told me, I was shocked. Something about hearing my boyfriend's voice telling me that all my memories were gone. It had felt as if the whole world were falling to pieces around me. 
Someone who can't remember their past can never understand themselves or even the people around them. Like Takuya. I don't remember how we met or where we went、uh, on our first date. The years we've spent as a couple might as well not exist from my perspective. To me, our history is just one big black mark, blotting out of a Blotting out all of the details that make up our love. It saddens me to think how Takuya must feel knowing all those precious memories were washed away. Sometimes I'm so stressed that I just burst into tears from no apparent reason. Whenever that happens, Takuya takes me into his arms and strokes my hair gently. He tells me that he loves me even with my condition. He says he will never abandon me or let me go. Sometimes he s a y it over and over as if trying to carve those words into my failing, into my failing memory. His sheer dedication sometimes leaves me speechless. I can't believe how lucky I am to have him. Still, there is this nagging feeling deep down, a certain je ne sais quoi that passes through my heart whenever I see his face. Je ne sais quoi, I don't know how, right? If I remember that. I can't tell him about it though, he would be heartbroken. Here we go. Takuya enters the living room holding a glass of lemonade. He sits it gently down on the coffee table. I found some straws, so I put one in for you. It looks cute, right? It's even your favorite color. Takuya. I tug on his abron, pulling him down to kiss him. Thank you so much for staying with me. Sherry. Why did I put my name? This is so cringe. I, I can't feel myself tearing up, so I bury my face in his chest. I don't want him to see me crying. He embraces me, and we stay like that for a moment. I'm sorry I'm always like this. Don't say no, don't say that. Honestly, sometimes I wish. We never had to spend a moment apart, but I also need you to be happy, love. If you're ever feeling sad or hurt, I want you to feel like you can open up to me. He squeezes me harder, and I feel his heart beat fast. Finally, he moves his face away and kisses me in turn. I need to go check on the food for a bit. Just stay here and relax, okay? You don't need to worry about anything right now. Takuya made Niku Ujada. Ha! Niku Ujada. An amazing beef and potato stew. Even the smell is intoxicating. It smells so good! Just wait until you taste it, love. Takuya grabs my spoon. Scooping up a delicate morsel from my bowl, he blows on it gently, then positions, then positions the spoon in front of my face. Oh, you. I lean forward a little and take the bite. Instantly, I'm overwhelmed by the stew's rich, warming flavor. Delicious! Really? I'm happy. We both start eating. You really have a gift for cooking. Well, I like to cook for you, working hard to create the right flavor, imagining the look on your face when you get to taste it. It makes me want to put everything I have into these meals. Well, that sounds like I'm set for life. Takuya smiles as he watches me finish my food. By the time I'm done, the bowl is particularly spotless. That was amazing, Takuya. Thank you so much for making this. Takuya smiles at me warmly, his eyes shining with affection. I'm lucky to have a boyfriend who takes such good care of me.
Anyone who wouldn't will be a pretty bad boyfriend. If you ask me, you are supposed to look after the person you love. I know, but it's almost too good to be true sometimes. Do you not like how I treat you? That's not what I meant. I just... My voice trails off as I notice his crestfallen expression. Sherry? Yes? Do you really love me? Okay. I can say of course. You really can't tell. I would go with this. Of course I love you. Why on earth would you think I don't? I'm just worried that this won't last forever. Because of my amnesia? Yes. What if one day you wake up and don't even recognize me? I could never forget you, Takuya. You're too important for me. I put my hand on his... Thank you. Takuya gets to his feet and starts collecting the blades. I will clean up. I didn't have time to prepare dessert. But let me see what I can whip up. Or maybe we could go upstairs and share another kind of treat. Don't just stand here. Come on, I'll help you clean up. Okay. He heads into the kitchen. I clear the table and get ready to follow him. But suddenly... I stumble and catch myself against the edge of the table. I feel so dizzy. My head is spinning right now. What's... what's wrong with me? Am I sick or... I need to wake myself up? Maybe I should go to the bathroom and splash some water on my face. I take the stairs one step at a time. As I reach the second floor, my limbs feel so heavy that I can barely even move. Come on, just a little effort. I feel bush at the bathroom door. I feebly bush at the bathroom door. I half collapse against the sink once the water starts to flow. I scoop small shaky handful and splash them against my skin. When I look up at the mirror, I see face of a ghost. I look terrible right now. Just where did this even come from? I was fine a few minutes ago. A thick, sour odor cuts through my thoughts. A smell so bad that it's almost sobering. Usually I can't smell it when I'm in the bathroom. Takuya says it's got something to do with the plumbing and that he will fix it when he can. I really hope that when he can is sooner rather than later. This smell is making me nauseous. I reach behind me to grab a, a nervy towel, but I end up knocking, uh, knocking it into the bathtub. I sigh and lean forward, placing a hand against the wall. Suddenly, somehow, it shakes beneath my, my touch. There is a loud thud like something struck the wall below, and before I can pull away, the blaster buckles inwards. Wh what? I stare open mouth at the huge hole that appeared in our bathroom wall. What did I do? I bear closer. It looks like this hole has been here for a while, and that whoever lived here before us had rushed to patch it up. Now that I'm looking more closely, I can even tell that the paint, uh, that the paint around the hole is, is a different shade of yellow than the rest of the wall. How has neither of us ever noticed that? I need to tell Takuya about this right away. But how did the wall even get damaged like that? I stop my tracks, turning to look at the hole. Moments later, I brace my hands against the wall and I lean forward to look inside. At first, I don't see anything. That's strange, 
sinkingly sweet odor is even stronger than it was outside. This must be where the problem is. I can even hear the pipes buzzing metallically. As my eyes adjust to the light, I can just about, I can just about make out their silhouettes, and then I see what else in here. Deeper in the darkness, I can see the outline of a person, their arms and legs, head and torso, but none of them are in the right place. I recognize a human figure in an maid. A corpse? Ah! I recall, I recall tripping over my own feet. My vision goes black. And the last thing I hear are footsteps. I wake up with a jolt. A nightmare? I rub my eyes. I'm sitting in our bed, my cold, cl uh, clammy body covered with sweat. What time is it? Where is Takuya? With some difficulty, I drag myself out of the bed. Right now, the only thing I care about is finding Takuya. I take a deep breath and step out into the hallway. Ah! I almost crash night. I almost crash right into Takuya. Takuya. Takuya takes my shoulders gently, pushing me back into the bedroom. You're already feeling better. I think so. What happened to me? Well, after you offered to help clean up. When I came to check on you, you were passed out on the sofa. I figured you must have been exhausted, so I carried you up here. But I will admit, you look a lot better now. I'm glad. I don't. Takuya, I had a terrible nightmare. I was in the bathroom, and that awful smell had come back. That The wall, the wall melted, and there was this body. Sherry, there is nothing wrong with the bathroom. You're just exhausted from work, is all. But tears begin to flow on my cheeks. Takuya, what's wrong with me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. Takuya pulls me into a hug, crushing me against his chest. I'm crazy, aren't I? No. You are not crazy, love. Just try to calm down. Please, everything will be... I'm guessing this will be. Everything will be alright, I promise. His words ring hollow in my ears. Listen, you need more sleep. If you lie down and wait for me, I will be right back to hold you once I've done the dishes. I raise my eyes, surprised. You're worried about the dishes right now? A messy house causes messy thoughts. I need to make sure you don't have anything that could distract or upset you. Nothing he is saying makes sense. Please, don't leave me alone, Takia. Don't make a scene. He's being unusually strict about this. I pull away and heavy silence settle between us. Don't be so down, love. I even brought you something to help you relax. I don't want it. He looks at me surprised. Take your medicine, sweetie. You know you need it. I said no. Damn it, Cherry. <laughs> Damn it, Cherry. Why are you shouting at me like that? Because you shouted as well. What do you expect? Takuya doesn't respond. Fine. If you don't want it to if you don't want to listen to me, go ahead. He leaves the room. I'm still shocked by his behavior. He's never been this aggressive with me before, has he? I hear a soft click. I scramble uh, I scramble towards the door and try to open it. What? It's locked. 
Takuya? No answer. There is no way he would do that. I bang my fist against the door, but he still doesn't answer. Why is he acting like this all of a sudden? Did I do something wrong? I need to get out of here and talk to him. I go to the desk and start opening the drawers. Even with my amnesia, there are certain things that are so deeply ingrained in me. It's like muscle memory, riding a bike, for riding, ah, riding, riding a bike, trying my um, shoelaces, picking a lock. Even though I couldn't remember when or how I would learn those things, I could still do them extensively. Whatever. Now what I can use as the lockpick. A hairpin? That's exact. I unbend the hairpin and slip it into the lock. After a while, I hear the tumblers click. It worked. I quickly, I quietly open the door and go out into the hallway. I'm not sure what I would say to Takuya, but I know we need to talk. There is a strange rhythmic sound coming from downstairs. That's right, he said he was doing the dishes. I glance towards the bathroom door. There is no way I'm going back in there. I make my way downstairs. The sooner... I can ask Takuya what's going on the better. I pause on the bottom step for a moment. I can hear that sound more clearly now, although it doesn't sound like someone washing dishes. What on earth is he doing? I know he mentioned something about desert, but it almost sounded like chopping up vegetables. This doesn't make any sense. I start to head forward to the kitchen, but my body freezes mid-step. Tokyo was so angry earlier. Should I really be bothering him? What am I thinking? He locked me up in, the, in our bedroom. No matter how he is feeling, he needs to apologize. My sudden indignation propels me forwards. I pull the door, up, I pull the door open as hard as I can. Tokyo, you better have a good... My voice dies in my throat. Wow! His clothes are drenched with blood. And he's holding a kitchen knife. Takuya darts towards me. Sherry, I told you, stay upstairs. You need to get out of here, now! But it's already too late. I can see what's laying on the cutting board. An arm. I shove Takuya away from me, choking down the bile in my throat. The entire kitchen is awash in the thick metallic stench of blood. The room that my boyfriend always cleans so diligently is stained with human wreckage. My God! Several large, orderly, bulging garbage bags are strewn across the hardwood floor. What the hell is this? What did you do? Please, don't freak out. I can't explain everything. Just, just give me a chance. Before you lost your memories, you had a stalker. He was a disgusting human being, but you were too nice to really stand up to him. So I decided to step in and take care of things. His fingers tightened around the knife handle as they spat those last few words. As he spat those last words. But now, it's okay. I fixed it. For you. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I feel like I've been woken up inside some awful horror movie. But it's really happening. My sweet, love, loving boyfriend is standing right there, smiling that... Same boyish smile, even while there is blood dying, drying on his cheek. You murdered someone. I had to. What are you, psychotic?
imagine imagine seeing someone murdering another person okay and they are holding a knife in front of you and instead of running you will be like what are you psychotic <laughs> my whole body is shaking i feel not i feel hot and cold and numb all over i can't even move Tokia's eyes darken don't call me that it's awful no it's it's hurtful i did what i do for your sake you know that i stagger backwards still shaking Adrenaline surges through my veins, and before I know it, I'm sprinting towards the front door. All I can think of is getting away. I hear footsteps thundering behind me, and I dive into the nearest doorway to avoid being ta tackled. I regret it instantly. The living room has one exit, and it's one I just came in through. I dash to the other side of the coffee table, hoping I can use it to keep some distance between Taki and I. Sherry, come here. With his height, it barely takes two strides for him to reach me. I duck away and charge back into the hallway. I dash to towards the door, my legs moving as fast as, as they can. But a large hand clumps down on my arm. Just where do you think you're going, huh? The look on his face is terrifying. He yanks me towards him, but I manage to wriggle to wriggle out of his grasp and dart up the staircase. Where will I go? Uh, the bedroom? The bedroom seems like a safe place to hide. Uh, I should have chose the bathroom. Bathrooms usually have locks, right? Shoot! Where should I hide? Uh... I dive under the bed. I can hear Takuya's footsteps in the hallway outside. He stops by the bedroom door. He enters. Heart bounding, I cover my mouth as best as I can. Bearing under the bed sheet, I can see Takuya's feet standing just a few feet away. It seems like he's trying to decide where he can where he should look first. Seconds later he strides towards the bed and crouches. Oh there you are. I try to scream, but his hand covers my mouth, his strong arms scoop me up like a small child. With his insane strength, it doesn't take long for Takuya to drag me downstairs, kicking and screaming. He holds me down, binding my arms and legs with uh, a thin length of, uh, of robe. I try to call for help to ask him why he's doing all of this, but he just wads up a few tissues and shoves them deep in my mouth. He moves closer, brushing my hair out of my face with gentle, painstaking care. He pulls the ball of tissue out of my mouth. I love you so much. He leans in to kiss me. I don't want you. What? what? He takes a step back. You are not my boyfriend. You are some kind of sick kidnapper. What are you saying? You're looking at me like... Like you are sober. Sweetie, don't tell me your morning medicines wearing off this fast if I up the dosage much more well. Takuya's face is unrecognizable. His soft, gentle smile had been replaced with a deranged smirk you're twisted you asshole oh you can't call me as many nasty little things as you would like dear in my mind i see a man whose strong comforting arms are wrapped around me but it's not tuck here 
more memories begin to emerge. The first time we met at a small cafe on a cold afternoon. The last time we went to the beach together, laughing as we chased each other across the sand. Slowly, his face is comes into focus, and I remember what he looked like. Specifically, I remember what he would, what he looked like when I found his body in the hole. A rotting, sunken face covered with thick, jagged gashes, maggots wriggling into every rotting wound. Oh God, CG. When I come back to my senses, my cheeks are soaked with hot, salty tears. Takuya okay, is still watching me. How could you? You bastard! You took him from me. You ruined my life. <laughs> Imagine standing in front of a murderer who just murdered your partner or whatever. Nicole. You ruined my life! You bastard! And I am never letting you go. You know why? Because you loved me just as much you even said so at dinner. What? Sherry, of course I love you. Why on earth would you think and ah, my choice? But the man I would say I love you isn't the sadistic monster standing in front of me. I could never love someone like you. You, you liar! You think you can play with my feelings like that? This gonna stop right now. If you are not gonna listen, I will make you love me. I will make you stay with me for the rest of your life. I know how to fix this. To fix you. No more drugs. No more rope. No more getting your memories back. I, we wouldn't have to worry anymore about any of this. He grabs a kitchen knife from the table. Why didn't I see it sooner? It's so obvious. And so perfect, just like us. I think about it when we make love. Our bodies are connected, right? But eventually, we have to break apart. But that's just sex, isn't it? There are always ways that our bodies and our souls could be inter... 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 Ha! Intertwined forever. What are you saying? I'm saying that I need you inside me. Really inside me. Right here. If I eat you, your flesh will unite with mine. Ooh, I'm so glad I left room for dessert. How did you love? Bad ending. Aww, there is a good ending. Aww. Don't tell me I need to go back. Ah. Okay. Uh... I think if I lied to him, this would lead to the same bad ending, which is cannibal love, so I will go with no. Fuck off. Despite the overwhelming terror, I meet his uh, glassy of glitter gaze. I don't love you. I never loved you. The man I loved is dead, and even though he's gone, I will never- That bastard is gone! I stabbed him hundreds of times! He's lying in a million little pieces in bags! He is nothing but meat now, so why won't you? As he screams tearfully into my face, I kicked uh, out against the damaged rope I, around my legs. My foot slams into his face. Ah! Tokyo falls backwards, dropping the knife. I barely catch it between my fingertips, and I work quickly to cut myself free into the lock. As soon as I hear the lock click, the lock click. I threw the door open and ran into the street. I stumbled several times, but managed to keep on running. I'm banting my breath buried in my lungs. As I emerge into the neighborhood, the streets are completely empty. Suddenly, 
Something firmly grabs my arm. I try to scream, but all that comes out is a weak moan. Sherry, is that you? I recognize a familiar voice. When I turn around, I see one of my neighbors, a tall woman with a large dog sitting in her side. If not now, we need to move. He's coming. Suddenly, the dog begins to growl. What's wrong, boy? A little ways off, a tall shadow de detaches itself from the darkness of a high brick wall. I recognize him immediately. He's coming towards us. The dim glow of the street lights glints off the do of the edge uh, of a kitchen knife. The hell is wrong with- I am warning you now, kid. If you try any funny business, it's not gonna go well for you. You really hate me, don't you? I can see it in your eyes. There is not a drop of love left in them. Why can't you love me? All I ever wanted is to give you everything. I worked so hard for you. How could I ever love someone who destroyed my life just so they could trap me in some dollhouse and drug me half to death? I wanted to build you a better life. It's all I could think about ever since the first day I saw you. You were crying on the bench, looking so scared and so alone. Every tear I saw you shed felt like a shred, felt like a shard of broken glass being stabbed into my heart. With one last panicked glance at me, he tears off into the night, running as fast as, as, fast as he can. It's been almost a year since that whole incident took place. It feels strange, looking back on those days. I moved as far away as I could, and decided to start over. The horrible events I endured, they're all in the past now, but still, I can never... A few days ago, I received a letter in the mail. There was no name and no return address. All that was written on, the, there was this... The only thing my heart desires is you to forgive me, Sherry. True ending. Best love. Okay. Yeah. See you in next videos, I guess.